Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. I got a lot of messages from you guys as of recently asking me if it's worth going back to the game right now and gearing before the patch 9.2 or if it's worth waiting for the brand new update and use some of the gear catch up mechanisms enabled with a brand new patch. So in today's video, I'm going to go over patch 9.2 gearing for fresh new characters coming back to patch 9.2 as well as your alts. All the new gearing methods available in patch 9.2 to catch up to everybody else before the brand new PvP, Mythic Plus and Raid season opens. As well as giving Blizzard my feedback on how they can improve gearing for alts and new characters going forward in the next update. Right before that though, most of you guys watching this videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you are reminded, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel as well as to the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you enjoy update videos like these for patch 9.2 or potentially future WoW expansion announcements. Before you venture out into Zareth Mortis, you should check in with Haven, the brand new player hub for the patch 9.2. In Haven, there's a new anima gear vendor, which sells you 226 item level gear. This gear isn't amazing, but it's excellent for players coming back for patch 9.2, as well as fresh new leveled alts. The gear is bought with anima, which is abundant right now in Shadowlands, so getting the resources to get the gear is going to be really easy. The gear tokens are also account bound, so you can use the anima on your main character to gear out fresh new alts. And after you get your starter set, it's time to venture into Zareth Mortis. And in this brand new zone, there's treasures to collect, rares to slay, and world events to participate in. And all of this content has a chance of dropping 336 item level gear. While treasures and rares can be done solo, you will need other players to complete world events. Whenever a new world event is up, it'll show up as a marker on everyone's map. So whenever a new event is up, there's a good chance other players will be there ready to help. Just like every other zone in Shadowlands, Zareth Mortis will also have world quests, and world quests has a chance of dropping you 233 item level gear. So make sure to check your map every single day, because there could be an upgrade right around the corner. Throughout your adventures in Zareth Mortis, as you loot secret treasures and fight powerful enemies, you will be collecting Sandworn relics. When you have enough of these relics, you can exchange them to Elder Rafik, who will then sell you 246 item level gear. Right now, the gear vendor will sell you different pieces at different prices. The pants and the chest, for example, will be sold for 300 relics. Shoulders, gloves, and boots can be sold for 230 relics. And bracers, belt, and cloak will be sold for 160 relics. In the early testing on PTR, when you slay rares, you can get anywhere between 3 to 7 relics each. When looting the sand-worn chest, you could scoop up anywhere between 10 to 25 relics at a time. Also, certain dailies and quests from the new faction of the Enlightened Brokers can also reward you a little bit of relics on the side. On paper, this gear is fantastic for solo gameplay. Hunting down powerful elites and rares in Zareth Mortis and grinding them until you get enough relics in order to gear out your character seems like an awesome solo progression system as long as the reward is good enough. The gear is 246 item level, which isn't terrible, but in patch 9.2, it'll be mostly entry level gear to get into your normal rating, to get into some of your lower level Mythic Plus dungeons. And if it has enough versatility, maybe it might get you into some PvP encounters. And if this is meant to be treated as entry level gear, then I don't think it should be too grindy. If this gear vendor is intended as yet another catch up mechanism in patch 9.2, then I think that maybe Blizzard should reconsider some of the relic prices or simply allow you to loot more relics from the different activities in Zareth Mortis. However, they could also take this system in the opposite direction. Instead of dropping 246 gear, what if the vendor dropped 262 item level gear? This way, you can keep the grindy elements while giving solo players a meaningful gear progression through the zone of Zareth Mortis. I just don't want Blizzard to make catch-up gear super grindy to get. If the Sandborn gear is intended to be another gear catch-up, then I don't think it should be too grindy since the item level is very entry. But if they plan for this gear to be some of the more competitive ways for solo players, players that just don't like dungeons or raiding with others or PvP with others and would rather just progress solo, then Zareth Mortis with higher item level gear could be that grindy system that actually gets some satisfying rewards. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think, how should Blizzard handle this brand new sand worn gear? 
Should it be used as entry level easy catch up gear or should the item level of this gear go up but keep the grinding nature as a way for solo players to have gear progression in patch 9.2? Let me know all that in the comments below. With a brand new zone, we also have a brand new world boss. Right now, we don't really know what kind of gear, trinkets or weapons he may drop. But generally, whenever they add a new world boss in a new update, the gear from that boss is pretty relevant at the beginning of the patch. So if you're going to be playing in patch 9.2, make sure you slay the world boss every single week in Xerath Mortis. If you are a crafter or have some gold to spend in the auction house, in patch 9.2, players will be able to craft higher item level gear than ever before. The base item level that you can have in every single slot for your character will be 233 crafted gear. At first, when this gear goes up on the auction house, it'll be pretty expensive. But as more people list their items, the price is naturally going to go down. Eventually, the price should be low enough where if you have some gold to spend and you want to gear out really quickly, you should be looking out on the auction house for any crafted 233 gear. You will also be able to craft 262 item level gear. However, unlike 233, 262 items will be unique. That means your character will be able to only wear one crafted 262 item level piece. This gear will definitely be expensive, so it might take a little bit longer before 262 becomes roughly affordable. But if you are going to be buying a 262 item level piece, I suggest buying it on a ring or a neck. Necks and rings come with a lot of secondary stats, and you don't replace these items that often if they are your best in slot stats. They also come with a socket, which makes them even more valuable, and it becomes harder to replace them going forward. And outside of all that, we have our regular gearing methods, Mythic Plus, PvP, and Raiding. So, once you get enough item level, it might be a good idea to figure out which endgame content you want to start grinding. Doing some Mythic Zeros for Mythic Pluses will get you a decent item level. Starting your PvP gear collection will get you gear that scales within PvP. And of course, raids have some of the strongest trinkets, potentially the best weapons, and of course, tier set pieces, which you'll also be able to craft with the Creation Catalyst. Creation Catalyst will be open 8 weeks after the patch 9.2 launches, as of the recent PTR updates. We will be using the Creation Catalyst to upgrade some of our higher item level gear into a tier set gear, in order to unlock our tier set bonuses for our classes. The only thing you need is high enough item level gear to turn into tier sets, as well as Cosmic Flux, which will be a currency rewarded from endgame content, like PvP, Mythic Plus, Raining, and even Torghast, as well as a variety of different Xerath Mortis activities like Treasures, Rares, World Events, like we talked about earlier. And that's going to be the full list of all the ways you can catch up with gear in patch 9.2 right now on the PTR. And it's a good idea to give Blizzard right now our feedback on these gearing mechanisms. They seem to be listening to a lot of feedback and making changes based on player feedback. So if you want gearing to improve in patch 9.2, you better make sure your voices are heard. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys like this video or found it informative, give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. As always, we have a link in the description towards our Discord community channel. If you watch these videos on a regular and want to hang out with the rest of the guys in the community or message me directly, DMs are always open. Join our Discord down in the description below. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts about gearing catch-ups for patch 9.2. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see all of you in the next one.